always easier to shut down the ports and then have no shut them once all the config is in place. So to do that, I'm gonna type in here channel protocol will be LACP channel group and then the number, we're just gonna use one in this case here, will be mode active. So we're gonna actively negotiate a port channel. And because of the fact that we haven't configured anything on the port channel itself, it should detect the communication, but I'm gonna type in here switch port mode, or switch port trunk and cap.1q, switch port mode of trunk. The cool thing is, because the ports are shut down, it doesn't matter the order in which I type the commands in. When the ports are active, then that could potentially be a problem. But normally, if I was to type in switch port mode trunk ahead of time, it would have rejected the commands because the ports would have been uh, enabled. But with them shut down, it doesn't matter because there's no active, the parser isn't actively checking the configuration of the interface because it's shut down. So now that I've got that done, I'm gonna come over here to this guy here, and I'm gonna say the channel group will be one, and then we're gonna say a mode of active. And we're gonna type in the switch port mode of trunk. So port already in a port channel. So you, if we were to go ahead and, even though the ports are shut down, we're gonna type in no and take that off and switch port mode trunk, and then do the, so then we have this, you can use force option to override the ports parameters. Use port channel compatibility parameters to get more information on the failure. So show port channel compatibility parameters. And there's a lot of stuff. I've actually never seen this output before. That's a lot. Anyway, um, that's just some of the basics to this. But we do a show run port channel, port channel. Actually, let me go ahead and set the command. We're gonna say channel group one mode active and we'll say force mode active. We could have cleared the config too and that probably would have worked. Show run interface port channel one. Cool, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna no shut the nine, the switch nine side. So no shut, bring those ports online. And then over here, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna type in no shut. And see exactly how this plays out. So both the line protocol, of both interfaces comes up and then the port channel is going to come online as well. Line protocol is up. If we do a show, a do show, Ether channel summary. We're gonna see that gig zero slash zero currently is not in the port channel. So we come over here to Nexus 9K7 or 9K1 and we do a show run interface E1 slash seven. So he's there and if we look at one slash eight. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to say default interface E1 slash seven through eight. I'm gonna come over on this side here. I'm gonna go ahead and shut down the range. So we're defaulting means we're taking the configuration away from the ports. And now I'm just gonna go in here and type in interface E1 slash seven through eight. I'm gonna type in here switch ports, uh, say uh, shut it down. And I'm gonna say the switch port mode is trunk and the channel, pro, channel group one mode of active. Uh, let's actually go ahead and say no interface port channel one. We'll hit the interface command again. There we go. So that's what I was expecting it to have happen. So if we do a show run interface port channel one. There we go, that's better. So we're gonna go ahead and no shut this side, bring these guys online, and then no shut these guys, bring him online. So now we should have both interfaces come online, which is the ultimate goal. Okay, so that's better. So if we do show run, or do show ethernet, ether channel summary, this is what we want. This is the ideal output that we're looking for. On, nine, on the 9K, we're gonna do a show 
ether or it says show port channel summary and we should see both ports are bundled layer two and up so perfect you've got that problem resolved and that's basically what we want to have happen now I'm gonna go and do a show VLAN brief we have the uh, VLANs are coming across the way that they should be which means we've got VLAN 10 and VLAN 20 both being allowed to go across the port channel so show interface trunk if we look at port channel 1 we can see 1 10 and 20 we need to bring VLAN 20 it needs to be applied to gig 1 slash 0 so on switch 9 we're gonna do a sh do show VLAN brief you'll notice that there are no VLANs here right so if I was to go in here and let's say VLAN 10 name is gonna be VLAN 10 and then VLAN 20 is gonna be v name VLAN 20 and go from there we're going to go ahead and interface gig 1 slash 0 this one will be switch port mode of access switch port access VLAN 20 spanning tree port fast all right now that that's in there on PC 20 I'm gonna go ahead and say IP is going to be 10.1.20.20 slash 24 to 10.1.20.254 as my gateway. And on 21, I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to say IP is going to be 10.1.20.21 slash 24, 10.1.20.254. All right, now that I've got this in play, here's the cool part. What we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to come over here to switch 9 and I'm gonna jump out of global config I'm gonna do a show Mac address table dynamic for VLAN 20 and we see 6814 coming in from gig 0 slash 1 so from a port channel perspective we can see the traffic is coming in over this port that's just the, how the the channel hashing in this particular situation has come across and if I jump over here to Nexus 9k3 go ahead and log into him real quick and we do a show system internal L2 forwarder Mac we're going to see that on PC 21 if we do a show IP we're looking at 6822 come over here do we see a 6822 we do not currently so what we have to do is I'm gonna go ahead and generate some traffic I'm gonna come up here I'm gonna ping 10.1.20.20 and there it works right and we can see that it's working and what I've got uh, basically going on over here on the right hand side I have Wireshark working where I'm limiting down the filtering down to simply ping and ARP and I'm checking E1 slash 1 on both of my spines which means I'm taking any traffic that's going destined to or from Nexus 9K1 and by doing that I'm able to see that we are load balancing traffic across both links E1 E11 here and E11 here and I have communication going back and forth now if I go back to Nexus 9K3 and I hit the up arrow, you're going to see that 6822 shows up and I'm pointing to the NVE peer of what? Of 1, right? Same thing over here at Nexus 9K1. If I was to do a show system internal L2 forwarder Mac, we're going to see the same thing here. We're going to see 6822 is reachable by a port channel 1, but if we look at 6814, we're going to point to 6814 is attachable via the NVE peer of 10003. Now we do a show BGP L2 VPN eVPN for VNI 10020. We're going to see that we are learning 10.1.2020 and 10.1.2021, which is exactly what we're looking for, right? If I was to do the same thing on Nexus 9K3, show BGP L2 VPN eVPN for VNI 101020. We had that output. So this tells me that everything is working the way that it's supposed to be in terms of the operations. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is where the beauty of this solution comes into play. Now we're running a port channel from 9K1 down to switch 9. That's working the way that we want it to be. So now what we get to go do, and this is the this is the cool part, in the next video, we're able to go ahead and take a look at inter VNI routing between we have VLAN 10 and VLAN 20 inside of the same customer. So what I'm going to be doing, let's go ahead and actually jump back over here to the topology. What I'm going to be doing is with this design is I'm actually going to make a slight modification 
for C2, I'm going to split this up into be C2 will be customer 2, so it'll be a different VRF, a different tenant. I will make two of these, I'll swap two of these PCs to be a different IP address. You guys will see this out of the gate when the, the, um, the topology is first seen by you guys. You won't see